Okay, good morning. How many of you saw the, this summer's blockbuster movie, Oppenheimer? A few of you, yeah. It was, uh, it was intense. <laughs> it was intense, but good. And one of the things that I um, really enjoyed about it were the, the way that his imagination was visualized. You could see the images of what he was <clears throat> imagining energy was. And it was both on the macrocosmic level, the universal, <clears throat> and the microcosmic level, you know, the atomic level. So, you know, we see these uh, the inside the atom where these subatomic particles are swirling relentlessly around the nucleus. And that mirrors the movement of the planets around a star. And it's just so much energy, so much potential power. And he kept seeing it, right? He couldn't, uh, he couldn't stop seeing it. Now, of, of course, unfortunately, <laughs> what he saw and how it was used, unfortunately, what happened is that, you know, this wonderful, greatest discovery, and it was used for incredibly destructive purposes. But what they didn't show in the movie, because it wasn't really the scope of the movie, was how that same energy can be used constructively, you know, <clears throat> nuclear energy for, to power homes, to power cities. And I recognize there's, you know, toxic <laughs> uh, uh, end results of that. But regardless, it's like anything else, you know, it's neutral. The energy within the atom is neutral. The energy in all of life is neutral. It's we are the ones that choose how to use it, right? We're choosing, and we're choosing all the time. And so Charles Fillmore had a fascination with the atom. He had a fascination with um, really all of science, and you know he kind of stayed on top of uh, recent discoveries, which were happening happening a lot in his era, in his later life. And he actually wrote a book um, about uh, the power within the atom and how it relates to the power in the mind. And it was called The Atom Smashing Power of the Mind. <laughs> because, you know, back then, everything, it was the atomic age, right? It's the modern atomic age. And he called it that. But he really believed that it was the very essence of divine mind, of spiritual energy that permeates all of life. That's how he saw it. And so he wrote, science has broken into the atom and revealed it to be charged with tremendous energy that may be released and be made to give the inhabitants of the earth power beyond expression when its law is discovered. Now, I'm thinking he probably wrote this a few years before those very scientists learned to unleash the power in the atom, and, uh, and then it was used to kill 200,000 innocent people. You know, and, uh, and Charles Fillmore died in 48, so he probably didn't, you know, at the time that it happened, America was like, yay, it ended the war. It ended World War II, right? The troops came home. It was all like everybody was, in this country, was all very excited about the possibilities here. It really wasn't until a few years later when those images came out and we began to realize the horror, you know, of what we had really done. But it took a while. Right? Everybody was into that atomic age. It's interesting how our perspectives can change when we find out what's really going on. <laughs> when we learn the truth of things, our perspective changes. Um, but atoms, which is the substance of all life, is of divine origin. It's mankind. When he forgets that <laughs> of his divine origin, he forgets that he is an expression of the divine, and he's disconnected with 
from the heart and is dreaming a dream of fear of separation distorts that divine energy. And yes, I'm using the male. I'm saying he, because we know. But then again, you know, we all have free will. And we have all used it to create our own evils, as Emerson would say. So it's a matter of perception, of consciousness. And, you know, we always think we're doing it to someone else. But we're doing it to ourselves over and over and over again. It's like, when are we going to get it? Whatever we think we're doing to someone else, we're doing to ourselves. You know, that's why it's so vital that we awaken to our divine identity. It is the most important thing. In my mind, it is the most important thing that we can do is to wake up and to help others awake up, awake up to our oneness, to who we truly are. That's what, we're, that's what Unity Center of Peace is here for, ultimately, is to help people awaken to the divine, to our oneness with each other. Because if we know our oneness with each other, divinity of other people and ourselves, we can never hurt anybody, right? Uh -huh. Aho! <laughs> That's right, we could never do it. We would only be a blessing. We would only want to be a blessing to the world. That's why it's just so vital to keep doing this. So anyway, so science tells us that the atom is made up of 99.999999% empty space. Think about that for a second. <laughs> so everything is made out of atoms, right? Everything's made. So everything is energy. Everything is empty space. It's energy. It's intelligent energy. It just kind of blows my mind when I think of it. It's like, how was the universe held in place? <laughs> you know, what's directing, the, the, what's directing that energy? Well, consciousness, right? It's consciousness. Consciousness directs how that energy is expressed. And whether that's universal, Universal divine consciousness on the macrocosmic level, the universal mind that creates, guides, and governs the entire universe and each one of us, or it's on the microcosmic level, our individual use of the same divine mind. We, we channel that energy. We, our consciousness chooses how that energy is expressed in our own individual lives. And when we're in alignment with that divine truth of who we are, with that cosmic heart, with that mm, divine mind of infinite possibility, then we can channel that infinite energy into expressions that are good, that are beneficial, that are life-giving. But when we're out of alignment with that divine source, with that, we're, we're disconnected from the heart. We are in fear, living in fear that the universe is against us and we're separate from one another, then that energy is channeled into expressions that are destructive. And prayer, you might have thought, how is she going to get to prayer today? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Affirmative prayer is a mechanism for aligning us with that divine source, with that divine mind, with that field of infinite possibilities so that we can channel that divine energy into experiences that are love-filled and joyous and abundant and expansive and that take on the vibration of wholeness and well-being. That's what affirmative prayer is designed for. And I'll tell you, it's, for me, it's the Fillmore's legacy is giving us the technology of affirmative prayer and letting us know how powerful we are, 
how powerful the universe is, how powerful our minds are, and how we can harness that power to create more good in our lives and in the world. That's the power of affirmative prayer. So, once a year, in September, around World Day of Prayer, we go over the steps of affirmative prayer together so that we're all on the same page, so that we remember what this technology is and, and, and ooh, remind ourselves, I have this technology, it's here. I can use it. So let's review now what the steps are and we'll do an affirmation after each of the, of the steps of affirmative prayer. What is the first step of affirmative prayer? Relax, relax, relax. We take deep breath, we relax the physical body, we relax the ego thinking, we relax our to-do list, we relax our obsession with the past and the future, we relax into the present moment. And we relax our attachment to this outer world of effect the outer world of form and experience, which is the result of yesterday's thinking. It's like reading yesterday, today, like reading yesterday's newspaper. It's the result of coagulated beliefs and thinking. So if we want to experience something different than we are right now, we need to do something different. We need to do something different in our consciousness. <clears throat> and that is to, whew, I'm going to let that relax right now. I'm not denying it, I, you know, it's here, yes, Cre I created it. But I'm just gonna take a breath and release that for now, and then once I can do that, oh wait, let's say the affirmation that goes with this, which is, I relax, release, and let go. Together? I relax, release, and let go. All right, now that we've done that, oh, now we have this open space. We've got this open, opening in our heart and our consciousness, and we can step into a higher vibration, a higher dimension. This is the realm of the absolute, the realm of infinite possibility, of divine mind, of spiritual energy, and you call it whatever you want to call it, God, or source energy, or the Tao, or great spirit, or whatever it is, whatever it is to you. This is what we are aligning ourselves with. We are opening ourselves up to that infinite life. And we also want to uh, focus, right? This is the step of this is focus, our se second step. We want to focus on the qualities of the divine, <clears throat> the qualities of this infinite universal divine essence, love, joy, fulfillment, it's the nature of coming to fruition. We can see that all around us. It is peace, harmony, divine order, beauty, wholeness, perfection, intelligence, limitless creativity, wisdom, infinite abundance, prosperity, richness, that all-providing substance. So this is the nature of the universe. This is truly in the realm of the absolute, which is where we are right now. We're playing in this field of the abs absolute. These are the qualities. And we know that if this divine essence is all that there is, remember this all one energy, right, within everything, then it must be us because we're part of it. How could we be separate from it? Of course, we're part of it. In fact, we are an idea in the mind of the universe. We're God's idea of itself in expression. So whatever is true of it is true of me, is true of you. And so our affirmation for this step is, I affirm, uh, no, I'm sorry, I am an idea in the mind of the universe God's idea of itself and expression. Together, I am an idea in the mind of the universe. God's idea 
of itself in expression. Yes. All right, what's the next step of affirmative prayer? Contemplation, yeah. Medi it's that meditative, contemplative step. Now that we've gotten this clear about the nature of the universe and who we are, we want to take it deep. We want to jump into the feeling tone of that and really know it at the core of our being. We want to know those qualities, right? Those qualities that we've just affirmed that we're wanting more of, whatever that quality is that you're wanting some more of in your life, we want to know at the core of our being that this is who we are. We want to feel it and get into the feeling tone of joy, the feeling tone of love, the feeling tone of expansive good, whatever it is that you're affirming, of guidance, of creativity, and open up the feeling nature and really get, spend some time here, right, in this step. You want to spend some time and feel what it is. You are tuning into the frequency, right? If you live for any amount of time, you remember <laughs> a radio that had a thing, a dial that you tuned, right? And there are radio stations and, you know, it'd be all staticky. <laughs> This is where you hear, and then you tune it a little more, and then you get onto that frequency. Well, that station, it was blasting all the time. It's just you weren't in the frequency of it. Same thing. The universe is blasting all the time, love and joy and abundance and wholeness. You're just not in the frequency of it. So in this step, you're tuning yourself into the frequency of wholeness of whatever it is that we want to experience on every level of our being, not just on the absolute, but every level of our being. So the affirmation here is, I am aligned with the frequency of abundant good. Together, I am aligned with the frequency of abundant good. That's right. <coughs> OK, next step is? Realization, right, realization. Okay, so this is where we know that everything that we think we want, that we think is outside of us, that we don't have it, and so that's why we're doing this prayer, because we want it, right? No, we want to adjust that thinking, because the realization is it's already here. Right? It's already here. Whatever I could possibly, that you could ever possibly desire is already an idea in the mind of the universe. It's already there. The quality behind that is already the absolute truth of you. And you're feeling it as a desire. You're feeling it that you need it, that it's separate from you, because you've been living in the world of effect of yesterday's thinking, of coagula yesterday's coagulated thinking, the world of form and experience. But now you've moved into this higher dimension, this realm of infinite, absolute truth, wholeness. And so here we are, right? We're here. We're, the, we're feeling it as a desire because we're, we were there, but now we're here, and we're knowing the truth that is already so. And this is where you can activate the power of your imagination. That helps to sort of fill in the detail, fill in the color and the feeling and the, what it looks like and what it feels like and what you're hearing or what you're seeing. You want to really get, use your imagination to fill it out and make it real for yourself, okay, in this, in this step. <clears throat> Okay, so the affirmation for this is, I am active, oh, here, so think about, before we do the affirmation, think about the thing that you desire, you, your heart's desire, what you really, what you would do an affirmative prayer for right now. Think about that for a second. I'm gonna ask you, when we get to the fill in the blanks, so this is a sentence with the fill in the blank at the end, when we get to that, 
You speak that. You're claiming it, right? Everybody got something? Okay. All right. So the affirmation is I am activating divine energy by claiming like, okay? I am activating divine energy by claiming infinite good right now. Right. Okay, so now we're doing this. You're claiming it. You're activating the atoms, right? You're activating that potential energy that is all around. Woo, those atoms are getting excited, right? And, and, and energized and activated from all of these steps and by claiming it. Okay, so the next step is... Thanksgiving and release. Thanksgiving and release. Okay, let's, let's talk about Thanksgiving. You're not giving thanks to God out there for giving you, finally listening to my prayer. Thank you, God, you finally listened to my prayer. No, it's not out there, it's in here. You are finally brought yourself into alignment with the truth. So you're reawakening your consciousness to who you've always been, to what you are right now, whole, complete, joyous, loving, perfect, abundant, fulfilled, whatever it is, right? It's it right now. So you're giving thanks for the reawakening and consciousness that this is already so. That's where we're, we want to vibrate with that energy of gratitude. And we're grateful that what we're affirming is already so. Listen to this. You don't have to make it happen or manipulate events or wish or hope or even wait. You need only accept the truth that it is already so. Right now, align yourself with this truth, in this frequency, it's already so. This is, I'm so grateful, this is already so, it's already me. And so what's happening is that this truth now, because all these, the energy is being stimulated and it's working together for you because you have the power to channel that, you have that consciousness, you have that power to channel this energy into expression so it's feeling it, it's beginning to come to expression, and it bursts forth into experience in your life. It bursts forth into experience. Now, one more thing. The release part is you're releasing your attachment to specifically how you think it should look, specifically how you think it should come about. Because remember, we're only looking from a, a very narrow viewpoint of reality. We're only seeing through a little keyhole, keyhole. There's so much more that we don't know. So hey, how about we let that higher intelligence within us, you know, be the source of our, yeah, yeah, I let this be. I let this be. And then we follow our guidance, right? I'm, I'm, I'm releasing my attachment to how I think it should be or how it, it should happen. I think, Karen, you were, that's part of your song, that you were sing, you, it's on our job to think about how it's supposed to happen. But it is our job to connect with divine guidance, to listen to it, and then move into action, following that guidance. Move into it. Yes, I hear this. And then the more we move into action, we take those steps, the more the wisdom, we hear it more, and we've created this relationship with our divine wisdom. And so we're moving forward in the direction, being in the frequency of that energy of wholeness. Okay? So our aff affirmation here is, I am grateful infinite good is now bursting forth in my experience. I am grateful that infinite good is now bursting forth in my experience. And now we say, 
And so it is. <laughs> and so it is. And whatever. You also, what you want to say? Amen. Aho. Ashe. Whatever you want to put on top of that. It's all good. Okay. All <laughs> it's all God. <laughs> Namaste. Hi. If this video has inspired you, opened your heart, expanded your consciousness, filled you with hope, empowered you in some way, we encourage you to support what we offer here at Unity Center of Peace by making your donation now. And thank you.